Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Epcot, the second theme park to be built at Walt Disney World. It originally opened as Epcot Center on October 1st, 1982. Epcot will take its cue from the new ideas and new technologies that are now emerging from the creative centers of American industry. Many of the original Epcot Center attractions were great storytelling vehicles. They were designed to educate the public on subjects such as technology, transportation, and nature. A lot of these old rides and attractions were fan favorites, but as our world progressed, so did the attractions, leaving a lot of them as defunct pieces of the past. Many people reminisce about the old days at Epcot, but there are many hidden reminders of these lost attractions. You just need to know where to look. So while exploring the park's history, today we're gonna be counting down the top five hidden secrets of extinct rides at Epcot. Number 5 One of the opening day attractions in 1982 was World of Motion. This Omnimover Dark Ride was sponsored by General Motors and took you on a humor journey through the history of transportation. Here at the World of Motion shows how people throughout the ages have searched for and found better ways to get from here to there. With 24 different show scenes that included over 100 animatronics, it was similar to Spaceship Earth, except it only spoke about transportation. Well, in the mid-90s, the attraction began to see a major decrease in popularity, and Disney decided to close World of Motion in January of 1996, making it extinct. Test Track would become the replacement, and after months of delays and complications, the ride officially opened in March of 1999, and General Motors remained the attraction's sponsor. Disney reused the original World of Motion building, creating a new experience where you took on the role of a crash test dummy going through testing procedures. This version of the ride was actually a lot of fun. Then in 2012, GM's contract was up, so Chevrolet became the attraction's new sponsor. Test Track received a complete overhaul, which meant getting rid of the realistic crash test scenes and creating new environments that were much more futuristic looking. Well, this new version of the ride actually allowed Imagineers to incorporate some tributes to World of Motion. This here is the old World of Motion logo, and if you look at the right-hand side of the wait time sign, you can see the logo is hidden in the corner. You can also spot the logo on the trash cans as well as in the loading area right here. Now, as you make your way into the outdoor portion of the ride, there's a few more hidden details that are really easy to miss. The first is the brownish sign on the left, which shows a futuristic city similar to the original model for Epcot. Well, the finale of World of Motion showed this modern city here, and the sign acts as a little reference to that scene. It's also pretty ironic that after the capability test, there's what looks like a very similar futuristic city, and I think it's safe to assume that it also references the scene from World of Motion. Now, immediately after the first sign, you'll see this other sign with some letters and numbers. Well, if you read this acronym out loud, it says, Fun To Be Free, and that's actually the name of the theme song from World of Motion. Again, the World of Motion logo can be found on the sign as well. In the new Epcot logos released at D23 to go along with the park's transformation, it seems as though they've brought the old World of Motion logo back. We can only imagine that this is the new official logo for Test Track. So, with the original intent of Test Track 2.0 making a callback to World of Motion, it seems as though it's a full circle moment as it becomes an official part of Test Track. Number 4 Heading into World Showcase, Maelstrom opened with the Norway Pavilion in July of 1988. This water-based dark ride took you through many scenes depicting the spirit and charm of Norway, from the mythological trolls of the Viking days along with the polar bears of the Arctic and the oil rigs of the seas. 
Maelstrom continued to draw crowds since it was only one of two rides in World Showcase. But in October of 2014, Disney closed the ride to make way for a new experience. In June of 2016, Disney opened Frozen Ever After as a response to the widely successful animated film Frozen. Now there's quite a stark contrast between the reality of Maelstrom and the fantasy world of Frozen, so there isn't much left over, but there are a couple things to take note of. Since Frozen Ever After used the same ride system and track as Maelstrom, the longship ride vehicles were reused, so this begins to create a little sense of familiarity in the attraction. Next, when you head into Elsa's Ice Palace, this was where you were able to find the three-headed troll on Maelstrom. Over the <laughs> As you were sent back, there was a swirling light effect, and if you look up at the ceiling on Frozen Ever After, you'll see this same lighting effect is still being used. But that's not all. During the polar bear scene on Maelstrom, you were able to find these puffins on the left-hand side. Well, after your ship passes Marshmallow and heads down the drop, you'll find the puffin animatronics from Maelstrom on the right-hand side. Recycling these figures into the snowy mountains outside of Elsa's ice castle acts as one of the most noticeable tributes to the extinct Disney ride, and it reminds us that the spirit of Maelstrom still lives on. Number 3 The Germany Pavilion is incredibly vibrant, and although it's never had an attraction, it is home to an extinct attraction concept. The Rhine River Cruise was a water-based dark ride that was supposed to have a home right here in Germany. It was said that you were supposed to experience the history and culture of Germany as you traveled past many famous landmarks down Germany's most famous rivers. Well, Germany was an opening day pavilion in 1982, and during the initial construction, part of the show building was already built that would have housed the load and unload areas. It was planned for Phase 2, but like many of the World Showcase pavilions, Phase 2 never happened, so the Rhine River boat ride was cancelled. Well, if you head to the back of the pavilion towards the restaurant, there's a mural that covers the back wall, and this is actually where the entrance of the Rhine River boat ride was supposed to be. If you knock on the wall, you'll hear it's hollow and, up close, it looks very temporary. Originally, this wall had wooden gates, but Disney covered the opening to this building around 1987 and never spoke about the attraction again. I mean, everyone loves a classic Disney water-based dark ride, and it's really unfortunate that this one never made it into Epcot. Maybe one day Germany will get its very own ride, but for now, beer and pretzels it is. Number 2 Step into the future in Horizons. Step into the future today. To celebrate the park's one year anniversary, Horizons opened on October 1st, 1983. Sponsored by General Electric, Horizons was another Omni Mover based dark ride and took you through scenes that envisioned what the future would be like. By using audio animatronics and intricate show scenes, it was Disney storytelling at its finest, and combined all of the pavilion ideas of Future World into one attraction. It was a fan favorite, but shortly after GE pulled out as a sponsor in 1993, Horizons closed unannounced in December of 1994. However, this wasn't the end, since it reopened a year later in December of 1995, since World of Motion was set to close in January to make way for Test Track, and the now extinct Universe of Energy was down for refurbishment. This unexpected reopening gave Horizons an extra three years of operation, then it was closed again, this time for good, in January of 1999 once Test Track began its soft opening. Now, there is a rumor that Horizons closed due to a large sinkhole around the attraction, but whether that's the actual reason for closing or not, the building was demolished by July of 2000. It's pretty crazy to think that that's almost 20 years ago. And then in August of 2003, Disney officially opened Mission Space, leaving the days of Horizons in the past. Now with Mission Space, you get the chance to experience a mission to Mars, and passing through the queue before your mission, you'll find this gravity wheel. Horizons had a scene where the family was walking through their own gravity wheel, but the gravity wheel in Mission Space has one specific hidden tribute to Horizons. 
In the center of the wheel, you'll find the Horizons logo. And this is not the only place at Mission Space where you can find it. After exiting the ride, if you head through the gift shop, the cash desk has a very obvious Horizons logo right in front of it. So the attraction isn't completely forgotten about. But there is one more Horizons remnant left over. This planter right here in front of Mission Space is the same planter that used to be in front of Horizons. When you take a look at this Google Maps view, you'll see it's in the same irregular hexagon shape as the former Horizons show building. Number 1 Another future world attraction that you weren't able to find on opening day at Epcot Center was Journey into Imagination, which opened in March of 1983. This one-of-a-kind Omnimover dark ride featured two protagonists, Dreamfinder and Figment, who explored the power of imagination through vibrant show scenes. One of the most memorable scenes was where we were introduced to these two characters. You've got a Figment, a Figment of imagination. Dreamfinder, I'm just friends. Uh, uh, not quite. Uh, I'll throw in a dash of childish delight. Uh, Look, Figment. Some new friends have joined us. Can we imagine too? Of course! Imagination is something that belongs to all of us. You mean everyone can think of new things? <laughs> That's right, Freeman. The sequence operated on a turntable, and there were five identical scenes rotating simultaneously. Well, in October of 1998, Journey into Imagination closed to make way for what was to be a substantial improvement to the original ride. But later we found out that this was far from reality. The current version of Journey into Imagination with Figment does not include the Dreamfinder, but there is a little hidden tribute to this beloved Disney Parks character. As you make your way into the Sound Lab, the very first door reads Dean Finder, which is a little play on words and tribute to the Dreamfinder. Now, just when you thought that 1998 would be the last time anyone would see Dreamfinder's Dreammobile, well, you're wrong and just in luck because one of the five vehicles still exists to this day at Epcot. Mouse Gear opened on October 1st, 1999, one year after the original Journey into Imagination closed. The Amazing Imagineers incorporated one of the Dreammobiles into the store's cog and spoke theme. Although it's missing some pieces such as the plaid cover on the back, it is one of the five original vehicles from the ride, hidden right in plain sight. Now with the transformation of Epcot fully underway, Mouse Gear is getting a total revamp and is set to close sometime in very early 2020. The concept art for the transformation from D23 shows a complete retheme, so if you find yourself at Epcot, be sure to get one final glimpse of the Dreammobile before it flies away forever and becomes a figment of our imagination. So what's your favorite hidden secret from Epcot? And if you could bring back just one of these extinct rides, which one would you choose and why? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Oh, and be sure to check out some of these other videos, which we think you'll enjoy.